How's my hat? <laughs> Looks fine. Okay. Uh, I'm D.I. Von Briesen, and this is the EcoBox Project. And you're here at the central campus of Central Piedmont Community College. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about this project. So, uh, as you can see here, we have a standard 40-foot shipping container. It's 40-foot end-to-end and about 10-foot high. And it used to be bright orange and had a shipping logo on it. We took off all the stickers and then painted it divine white. And then we put some uh, metal panels up on the roof to help capture rain and to keep the sun off the surface. And we put in some windows and doors. And my colleague Matt is back here welding one of the doors. And we're really trying to make it look a little bit different and also make it very friendly for people. So let me give you a quick guided tour. Here we have a prototype heat box. We haven't hooked it up yet. I uh, actually made this in my neighborhood. And we have a plexiglass surface that goes through, heats up the metal, which in turn warms up. And then a fan will blow air through here and out into the container. Um, and uh, we're going to mount that. And one of the challenges is how do you get heat when the sun is down? So we need to figure out a way to store heat. Come back around here. We're trying to recycle everything and uh, reuse materials. So we have a, a pile of lumber that was contributed by the theater. They finished the show, so we took their, their wood and we're using some of that. When we cut out a window, we save a piece of metal. So you can see some there and we're figuring out what to do with that later. And you see we put fairly traditional windows in. In this case, I need to put a couple more coats of paint on here. It's very humid these last few weeks, so it's hard to get a good coat of paint without a little bit of rust showing up. The bottoms, bottom corners are just supported with some landscaping timber, I mean some landscaping blocks. And we do expect it to settle a little bit. The container is about 8,000 pounds, um, but we'll just adjust those inch by inch as needed. And we've got a fellow who's been kind enough to donate a whole bunch of these, and they, they come in very handy. Um, and you can see this side is a little bit of a different look. We've got a much bigger window over there on the left. We've got a few more windows for the kitchen, the bathroom bedroom, whereas the side I was on just has two. So let's go back around there. And you can also see we have a slight angle here so that um, any water that hits the roof is going to, to flow down and into a rainwater catchment system. And at the moment we have a small solar fan rigged up to a small solar panel. It's just temporary to help ventilate on the hot days. Now if you look up above me, we have a 1.3 kilowatt solar array. We just put this up. It's on a six inch pole. We're about to put the additional components here, which you see over there on the step. We've got a combiner box and we've got a, uh, like my, my pointer? Mm -hmm. We've got a combiner box and a cutoff switch. That'll then run down through here, under the ground, to the box. And then over there on, on the interior, we're going to have our in inverter and batteries power all of this. So coming right around. Some of this is strictly temporary. Uh, we've come on with a bunch of pallets from the machine shop, and eventually we'll have a nice deck with nice steps and everything. This is just to, to use while we're doing the construction. Tell me, what's this ditch in progress for? This is to continue running the conduit um, over to the to here, and then we'll backfill it. You won't even know it's here. Okay. Now, ultimately, the solar panels would nor normally the solar panels would be up on the roof. Um, in this case, the location is not optimal for sun but it's a good location in terms of the students and the campus. So um, normally those panels would be directly on the roof and then we would orient the building to the south for solar exposure. We don't have that luxury here, but that's how we do in mass production or if we were putting a, a number out in a field or a parking lot or something. So we've had a lot of companies involved, including uh, one, one company donated a rain barrel and ultimately we'll have all the water from the roof channeled into something like this and we'll have a pre-filter and a post-filter and a number of ways of treating the water so that um, not only do we get rid of leaves and things like this but ultimately we'd like to be able to take showers or even drink from this water um, and that involves uh, another level of purification. You see on this side I went with more of a contemporary look so we've got the, the fake panes. So this side is sort of more traditional and the other side we have no panes and wider windows and a little bit more eccentric. Now one of the challenges is that as you paint it a solid color you begin to see all the imperfections, the dents. Um, so one of the things we're trying to do is figure out how to make it look uh, visually more acceptable. You can see here where we need another couple coats of paint because we welded some supporting trusses inside and of course that melted the paint. And that's We've already put one coat on there. So here we have the cargo doors. The intent is actually to 
if you align the doors like this, what we want to do is actually suspend suspend the patio here with some kind of railing, maybe some steps. So this would be kind of like a back door porch, or you could have a small pond here, or this could be off the hilltop and you'd be out admiring the view. Or we can just close it, we'll have a wall right here with another entrance door right here, and a shoe shelf, and shelving like that, and a big room closet and so on there. So that's kind of the exterior. We're going to use these tanks to store rainwater and also to create some thermal mass. So we'll have a, hopefully a thousand gallons that we can heat up or cool down and then use that to heat or cool. So we have to box these in and insulate them. And we'll probably put them on the side somewhere. And coming back around, it's a little bit messy. We've got a lot going on here, just some salvage material from the construction site. Um, these work as good substitutes for playing around with water. We've got the panels that came out. We need to reuse them. And at the moment, Matt is actually welding up all the edges where the frames meet the metal to make them completely tight. So that's kind of a quick overview of the exterior, and later we'll do, uh, we'll do some interior shots.